going to show you how to set up and use a suction machine for either tracheal or oral suction. First of all, I'm going to show you the canister. This is the collection canister. Um, and this canister has a lid. And when you put the lid on, you want to make sure that the lid snaps on tightly. One thing that you want to be very careful of is that nothing gets tucked under the lid to cause any sort of opening. So make sure that everything is outside of the lid. Then you want to snap the lid on tight. You want to look all the way around the lid and make sure that it's straight. You don't want to see any sort of opening. There's also two openings on the top of the canister. The large opening has a cap. And you want to make sure that that's closed. Your canister will fit right into your suction machine, like so. The opening on the top is going to attach to a filter that's going to attach to the suction machine. So there's a port right on the side of the suction machine where you're going to place one end of your tubing. Then you have your filter and your other tubing will go straight on the top of the canister. Coming out the front of the canister, you'll have your connecting tubing. The tubing is the same on both ends, so it doesn't matter which end of the hose or the tubing goes on the front of the canister. The other end of your tubing will connect either to your oral suction catheter or your tracheal suction catheter that comes in this kit. Once you get everything connected, then at that point you can turn the machine on and you can check your suction pressure. There's a gauge right on the top of the suction machine where you'll be able to read the suction pressure once you turn it on. You will need to crimp your hose or Plug the end of your tubing in order to read a pressure on the machine. And I'm going to demonstrate that. On the side of the machine is your on-off switch. So I'm going to turn the suction machine on and then I'm going to show you how to adjust the pressure. Your pressure adjustment knob is also on the side of the suction machine. So I'm going to turn the machine on. <laughs> open without crimping it or covering the end, you won't be able to read your suction pressure. Alright, so we talked a little bit about what's on the side of the machine. We have the on-off switch and we have your, um, your dial for adjusting your pressure. We also have our power cord charger connection, which goes right into the side of the machine. And then we'll plug into your wall outlet. This is a portable suction machine, so it will give you about 45 minutes of suction time when it's fully charged. It does take eight hours to charge. If you look on the front of the machine, we can see a green light and a yellow light. The green light is on because I have it plugged into an external power source. The charging light is on because I have it's charging, it's plugged in, it's charging the internal battery. The light on the top says low battery and that will be a red light and it will let you know when the battery is almost depleted and you will need to find a power source to plug it in. So um, I'm going to show you a few more things um, that are important about the suction cap canister. Um, you want to make sure that you're not, when you're using your suction machine, you're not overfilling your canister. So if you're using this every day, you're going to want to dump it out every day. And as a general rule, it's a good idea not to let your suction canister get any more than half full. When it gets half full, it's a good idea to dump it out. And what you would want to do, even though it's tempting because there's a hole in the top, you would never want to empty it out through that small port. When you empty it, you're going to always want to take the cover completely off and you're going to want to dump your, your secretions or whatever you're collecting out. If you look at the top of the 
of the lid, there's a float in here, and that's a safety mechanism built into this so that if you do overfill your canister and, it, and this gets wet, it's going to pop up to the top and you're not going to get any suction. So that's a troubleshooting tip. If you're not getting suction, you want to make sure that your jar hasn't gotten too full and that your float on the top of the jar has not gotten wet. Um, you can wash your canister out with a mild soapy water and if, if you're using your suction machine every day, you should be cleaning this every day. You also can wash your connecting tubing in a mild soap and water and rinse and air dry. The tubing with your filter attached, you do not want this to get wet. If this filter gets wet, the machine will not have any suction. So that's another troubleshooting tip that if you're not getting suction, you want to check and make sure that your filter has not.